So today we're taking a look at the Athern Genesis Canadian Pacific EMD SD70 ACU. My first Canadian train and my first impressions is it's actually very nice vibrant red color and it's very large. So here in the front we've got the MU cable down there, some ditched lights and an MU stand which is quite rare to see. There also is a green box right over here with the first aid kit symbol. This is just to show it's inside. Canadian National also does this as well. Then we got a wrench icon at the top. That's just for the toolbox inside, supposedly. We've got a lot of striping detail here in the middle and some grab irons all throughout, even the top corners. And I do find it interesting that one of these grab irons is painted white in this column just to blend in with the CP logo. And you can see the top corners of the nose are on an angle giving it that nice look. There also is a line dividing the nose and this is for the isolated cab just so the crew experiences less noise. You can also see the nose and the cab they make a V shape. And you can see they are angled if you look at it from the side as well. Alright so now let's take a look at the profile view. So the road number is 7000 and underneath we have SC70 ACU. And then we have DRF43 and that's just Canada's version they have their own naming system there also is a diagonal line here this is also for the isolated cap to separate it from the body and then we got this really wide rectangular sunshade here on the side all right so now let's go down below looking at the trucks so here we got a nice front bracket which is not on the other truck as well as some sanding lines here on the edges then the middle you can see the suspension so one thing I've been noticing that all my locomotives have this small tiny F in the front and that's just to indicate the front end and I just found it interesting how all of them have different styles for the F. Anyways here on the side we got some nice box detail, some I don't even know what to call it, some fencing over there and then we have these two wide horizontal vents. By the way there is a little notch in the stripe and that's just by design. Further along we've got a nice box down below, some details as well as Canadian Pacific. There's also this cool gold beaver emblem. Beaver is the national animal of Canada and this is 1881 so that's when it must have been founded quite a long time ago. Then we have a really thin brake wheel and a sign next to it. Very nicely detailed. Alright so on the bottom here you can have a closer view of what they look like. I'm not sure of all the parts but they're there alright. Alright so let's move further down the locomotive. We have that nice v-shaped radiator which is sort of what the SD70 Ace has as well and we have three fans right there on the side. You can see those are some some vents, some vents here in the back, and some panels. The rear truck features this chain hanging on the side, and this is an actual chain, so they're all linked together so you can move it around just like how a chain would move. I've also noticed there's some printed detail on the top step, also same as the front, and this last railing is on an angle, so it's a little slanted there. The rear vent is actually see-through, so you can see at the bottom right there all the way across. The main vents are not, however. And in the back on top, there's this rectangular box right there, and I feel like like that's one of the unique features to identify the SD70 ACU. I've got some nice grab iron ladder, some vents here on the side, and then the MU cable, the ditched lights, and the spare knuckle coupler holders. Like Norfolk Southern, Canadian Pacific likes to have their ditch lights in the back of their mainline locomotives as well. So you see right over here, this railing is actually slightly different from the other side. So this has a longer white section there. There is a bit of quality control issue with this white paint. You can see the reds kind of showing a little bit here as well as the other side. But you have to go really close to see it. Anyways, further down in this side of the locomotive, we got the air tanks above the fuel tank, and there also is an e-bill here in the middle, which is kind of weird. Usually that's next to the truck, and we got some indented doors, some panels, and the vent. There also is this little step up over there. Alright, so moving along, there is this tiny little mirror on the side of the cab, and it's only on this side. I checked the other side, they don't have it. Alright, so if you guys know what this thing is for, let me know in the comments, because I have no clue. So now let's take a look on the roof. We got this nice PTC antenna array. It's a very cool design, got a nice some black markings. I wonder if the black markings are just for show, or they actually have a purpose. But you can see there's a lot of tiny details there, like grab irons and lift hooks. So while editing this, I was watching a video by THG Multimedia and you can actually pop open the cab roof. So I got here this New York City subway metro card. He actually used his fingernails, but I'm going to use a metro card because I feel like I'm going to just scratch if I use my fingernail. But anyways, here we go. It took a couple of tries, but eventually came off easily. It's being held by these two magnets. You can see right there, the circles. And here's what the cover looks like on its own. You'll see the back part. There's magnets right there. And I believe the SD70 ACE has this feature as well. Now on the inside, we got the controls where the crew sits. A little circuit board for the light, I guess. And then we have three chairs. I suppose 
goes. One's for the conductor, one's for the engineer, and another one for the brake man. And here's what it looks like from the front. You can see some panel detail on the wall, but not super, super detailed. And the cover just pops in with magnets. Just make sure you push it all the way in. All right, so let's move further down the roof. We got some beds on top, some exhaust. I also found it interesting that this panel is actually extruding a bit. So you can see where the CA is. It's coming out on a panel. And in the midsection, we have these four boxes right there. The horn here in the middle. And then the three radiator fans, which are colored black. They also have these tiny little O-rings on the edge. And then in the back, we have this silver vent and sand filler hatch right there. So these top fans and vents are actually see-through, so you can see the little blades. Kind of hard to see though, but they are see-through. <laughs> and for you guys wondering what the bottom looks like, here you go, just in case. Because <laughs> I want to look at it from all angles. The SD70 ACU is a very, very long locomotive. It adds maybe like an inch and a half more than all my other ones, so you can compare it. From the top, we got the ET44 GVO, the Dash 9, and the SD70M. These are all shorter than the SD70 ACU. I could be wrong, but I think that is the longest diesel locomotive in regular service besides the DDA40X, which is not really used. So here I'm going to compare it to my SD70M, the closest relative that I have since they're both EM. You can see their noses look a lot different. This one's actually similar to the ACE nose. Well, the other one, more like an SD70 Mac. And if you look at it from the top view, you can see there are some similarities, like this exhaust section and that little square thing. And also these three radiator fans in the back, they are present. They just have flared. And it looks like they sort of moved this front section all the way up into the back, just making it longer. You can see this boxy thing is really not shared with the other locomotives that they have.
Alright, so for my final thoughts, I think the Athen Genesis Canadian Pacific SD70 ACU is a pretty well detailed train by Athen, except that little paint job in the back needs some quality control because it's a little see-through. But other than that, I am uh, pretty satisfied with this locomotive. I do like the fact you can open up the cab, which I was not actually aware you can do until watching that TSG multimedia video. I didn't actually see it advertised anywhere that it could do that, but I guess it must be standard now. <laughs> It's a very large locomotive. It's a rebuilt of the SD90 Max, so that's why it's so big. And I decided to get this locomotive because, number one, I needed to get all Class 1 railroads, and I thought I would get Canadian Pacific since they actually are the only ones to operate this right now. Norfolk Southern used to, but then they sold them all to Progress Rail. I also do like the Canadian Pacific red color scheme with the Golden Beaver logo. It looks really nice and sharp. There are also specially painted military units, which are really cool, but I feel like it's better to have a more generic color scheme so you can represent multiple trains instead of just one special train but yeah i hope you guys enjoy the video let me know down in the comments what you guys think hit the like button down below and subscribe if you had already if you want to see more videos like this in the future but anyways i'll see you guys in the next one bye